In this video, we're going to do some portfolio management. Now, a lot of what we do when we're trading is just manage our portfolios, right? I mean, we're not always actively trading and jumping in and out of the market. Uh, if we're focusing on day trading, uh, then of course there's a couple of hours where we'll do that. But for the most part, we're just managing our positions. Um, and in this case, we have a number of options on a number of different markets. So we're going to go down through and just kind of let you have let you follow along with my thought process as we manage our portfolio the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look up here at the s p 500 now the s p 500 has been dropping uh as we had talked about we picked up um this put option and we bought a call option and the call option was a little bit further out of the money you can see we paid 375 for it currently we're down 277 on it but it's got 71 days until expiration so I'm not going to liquidate that thing it's got a long time to expiration now the the put option on the other hand is four hundred and fifty dollars what we paid for it and it's up three thousand five hundred and twenty five and that's a seven hundred and eighty three percent increase over the last uh, the last week now you remember we we if you go back and look at the previous videos we drew this trend line in here we said you know the markets have a tendency to continue to rise but it doesn't mean they can't drop we looked at the sentiment of the of the options and if you're not uh, familiar with options sentiment uh, send me an email LH Turner at TradeMentors.com. I'd be happy to send you a video teaching you a little bit about how to read options to get options or market sentiment. And so we were looking for and anticipating a fall in this market as the sentiment of the market became about two to one to the downside. So that's what uh, gave us the impetus to pick up this option right in here. And we did that right here, of course, at the crossover of the blue-white system, and that's what we were looking for on a break for the downside. Now, I didn't anticipate it breaking and falling this far, but it's been good for the short position, and we made that recommendation back on that day. 808% uh, return on our money. That's a pretty good return. And uh, the market's starting to kind of hesitate right here. My goal for this market was to come down and test this area right in here. So this is kind of our, our goal area right down in here. Now I don't know if it'll get all the way down there. It's come down and kind of bounced off the higher end of it right now. Uh, we may have another down day tomorrow. We're just going to have to wait and see. What I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a, uh, a, a marker in here. And I'm going to come over and I'm going to use my email text messages and I'm going to come in and I'm going to put a target price in. And you can see Track and Trade will put a target price in. If we break above that high right there, above today's high, and I'll continue to watch that, but we'll see. If it breaks above that high, I'll probably go ahead and liquidate that position as that I anticipate this market turning around and start to rally once again. Now, oftentimes when you get a big drop like this, the market turns around and, and has a big rally. Now, I'm not really anticipating a big return or a big rally. I think what we'll see if this market uh, turns around and starts to, to rally, we'll start to see probably another uh, slow climb back out, which is why I'm not getting rid of this 71-day uh, call option up here. It's pretty much worthless at this point now. Anyway, there's only $97 in there. 71 days, might as well hang on to it. It's not going to hurt anything. And if the market does turn around and start to rally and come back up, this might gain a little bit of that back. Again, we've got 71 days, so we're okay on that one. I'm not going to liquidate it. We've already lost all of our value, but we made it up over here on the short side. So again, just portfolio management, watching and looking for a strategy and op option opportunity to liquidate and take profits. So let's come to our next trade. We're going to come down here to uh, crude oil, and let's go to the crude oil market. And the crude oil market dropped again as anticipated. Again, we made this recommendation, and we put on a couple of put options. You can see uh, we put three on, actually, to show the different leverage points. This one here was $110. That's all we paid for it. You can see it's got 97 days to expiration. So the theta, or the extrinsic value, time value, is uh, decaying very slowly. And we can see you can see that $110 investment, it's up 150 bucks, so that's 136% return on investment. That's a pretty good return on your investment in oh about a week's period of time. Uh, better than you can get at a local bank, I'm so I'm I'm certain. And if you come in here, we put $540 into crude oil on this option. And you can see that was a it's currently trading uh, giving us $760, which is 140% return. Still, again, 97 days to go. And we paid $1,420 on this one, and it's returned $1,340 with a 94.37% return on investment. Now, what you're going to notice is that the closer in market made more money, 
more dollar amount, but the percentage is not as high, 94%. This one here we laid out $540, and the return is 140%. This one here we laid out $110, and the return is 136%. That's only $150 versus $1,340, but the percent is higher. Pretty interesting. Usually you'll see the percentages stay pretty close to each other, but in this case you can see that the closer in market is showing a 94% return versus 140% return versus 136% return. And then you can see the initial investment over here. So as we look for and anticipate this market to continue to fall, we'll look to, to uh, trail down with these markets. Now we're going to trade the Heisenberg strategy. Uh, we're going to look for the ABC pattern. This is the ABC. So this is A, B, C. This came up to 130.9. We're looking for this market to drop. It did. It dropped. Now where are we going to anticipate the next leg? Now if we're looking for an Elliott wave, we know that we're only in the second drive. So this is drive one. This is the counter trend in here. And then this is drive two right in here. And this would be a counter trend right here, right? So this is a counter trend, and then technically speaking, if we look for a rally, we would be looking for a fourth rally high. Now the problem with this is that I'm not exactly confident in a fourth rally high or a third rally high up in here, a three drive to the top. Doesn't mean it won't happen, it certainly could, but I'm anticipating based on the seasonal nature of this market to see this thing continue to drift a little bit lower into expiration. Now we've got a, a long term view in here, you can see, versus a shorter term view. Uh, but nonetheless, this thing seems to be at least out into November, into November, before we get this little bump or rally bump in here and then another little, little rally bump. This thing seems to be wanting to drift lower during this time frame. So we're going to kind of keep an eye on this. Again, we're going to watch if the market does start to turn around and start to rally, we'll probably liquidate some of these positions and take them off the table. So here we're going to come into gold. This one here, we had a, a short position to put, but when the uh, stock market dropped so hard like, like it did, uh, of course, you run and throw all your money into the safe haven of gold. That's pretty common. What we do is we see if the stock market falls, gold generally rises. Uh, so they take the money out of the stock market, throw it over into gold. It's, you know, it's, it's not always that way, but it seems to be kind of a tendency for uh, things to work out that way. And that's why we liquidated our short positions uh, on gold, because we weren't actually looking for gold to just kind of continue to drift a little bit slower into this December time frame. With this big rally, we took a, a small loss, liquidated our positions on those options. So now we're down here to silver again. Uh, silver, we've got a strangle on here, a nice little uh, position for the long side, a little position for the short side. You can see we received, uh, actually we sold, the, we sold this one on the top, so we received 285, we're down 165 because of this rally today. Uh, we paid 285 for this option, 47 days to go, and it's down $50 due to the rally. We're going to leave this on here for now, see what happens. Uh, the, uh, the, the call option that we sold has 47 days left, and uh, not a huge investment, 285 on the top, 285 on the bottom. We're going to let this thing ride and see where it goes. Uh, down here to the T-bond, you can see that we picked up a couple of, we put a little, a little uh, strategy on here where we've got uh, where we bought one and sold one. So we bought one for 265, uh, and we sold one for 156. We're waiting for this one to decay. It's got 43 days. It's decayed and now theta is down 46 dollars, and we've also got uh, this one here is down 93 dollars. So as you can see, we're about underwater a little bit with 78 dollars. This one we just barely put on, barely put on a couple days ago. So it's got a little time to to work. Uh, and we'll see if this market doesn't continue to fall. Uh, it'll depend on interest rates. If interest rates start to go down, this thing will start to rise. If interest rates continue to rise, this thing will start to fall again. So we're going to come in here and look at corn. Uh, corn started to rally hard against our position. We were actually looking for this thing to give us a little bit more downside potential. And uh, we got 71 days in this thing for the downside. And this looks to me like, you know, the technically speaking, we are in a downtrend because we have uh, lower highs and lower lows. And if you come across here, you can see that this is a lower low, but we come into this little triangular wedge formation that kind of broke out the top of this thing. And oftentimes it'll turn around and come right back into the wedge. And that's what I was anticipating before we got this rally. I thought we'd get bigger pullback back into this region, testing this uh, center area or well, the 50% region of the of the triangle right in here. So that was my actual target goal for this market to come back down into here. 
uh, which is why we put on the put, the, the couple of put put options, uh, anticipating that this market would drop a little bit. And of course, we did that to show the difference in leverage. We have a $293 option. We're down 118 have a $93 option. We're down 43 You can see 40% versus 46% against our position. 71 days to go for the short side. Um, because that's rallying like this and it's giving us this bump, uh, not too thrilled about... Um, about staying short on this market. So if we come to soybeans, you can see we've also got the same concept here. We were talking about soybeans, and, and I put these option orders on when I did the recommendation video, but I said in the video, wait for this market to pull back a little bit against this position and looking for the blue lights to break and for this market to pull back a little bit before we got into the rally and then to actually buy or put on our call positions for the rally into the long term. If we look at the seasonal nature of this market, you can see that it generally just kind of drifts higher into expiration and so that's why we were looking for calls but we were put the puts on here to pick up this this uh, this fall in here so we put them on both the same time as we made the recommendation to watch this market just to see as an exercise 375 218 and you can see we're down 125 on the top down 56 on the bottom so we are waiting for this market to actually do something one thing that's a, a negative about options if you buy options and the market doesn't do anything, it just kind of wanders sideways, that's, that's death to an option. Okay, We need markets to actually move. We need to find markets that are in extremes, highs, and lows, and we generally do that with the seasonal nature of market. Uh, if the market is, is tired and lazy and just goes sideways, theta catches up with us and kills us. Okay, So we have to be, get, be careful. Theta, of course, being the extrinsic value or time value of the market, and it decays continually uh, all the way into expiration. And so the market has to move fast enough to outperform theta or outperform the decay of time. And so if the market's lazy and just goes sideways, we're not going to have that happen. And it seems like that's what's happening here in soybeans. It's just kind of wandering right now. It's made a little bit of a rally, but it's not doing much for us. But, of course, we just put these on a couple of days ago. So we're going to leave these because we've got two of them on here. Uh, I'm going to come down and, and look at wheat. Wheat looks like, to me, it should fall. The thing is that corn rallied real hard today. So corn rallied and wheat fell. And that's a little bit against what we kind of anticipate. I've got a put option in here. Generally, those markets travel together. Uh, we got a little put of option in here looking for lower price again if we look at the seasonal nature of this market you can see it can continually drifts lower seasonally speaking into expiration and so buying a put option uh, was the reason for that uh, that uh, idea and we got that idea out of uh, trade mentors if I remember or trade miner if I remember we got a short position recommendation on that one and we paid 562 for it we're up 62 dollars as this thing dropped so as I come in here We've got the three grains that we've got positions on. I'm not real fond of hanging on to these options with this big rally in corn. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to liquidate the one that was more expensive. Okay, It's down 40%. Let's go ahead and liquidate that option. We're going to take that one off the table and just manage this position. We're going to leave this $93 one on. The reason is it's already down $43. It's only worth $50. So there's no reason not to just leave that thing on there. We paid $50. We paid $93 for it. It's only worth $50. We got 71 days uh, still in, invested in this market. So if this market does turn around and start to drift lower, you know, seasonally speaking, this market has a tendency to drift lower too. Uh, if it does, uh, you know, come over this little hump right here and then start to drift lower, we'll have uh, this option here, just kind of like a little insurance policy against shorter prices or lower prices in corn. But we're not, you know, we're not... Uh, we're not leaving a big investment out on the table. Same thing with, with soybeans. we got both these positions. We're going to leave those on. Wheat, again, because we're short and this market did drop, we're going to go ahead and leave that one on there. Uh, and then, last but not least, I want to come back to this spread. Now, if you remember, about around September 5th, 6th, we were looking at this spread, and we were looking for this spread. This is the uh, October uh, lean hog spread and this market was right back in this lower region here and we were looking for it to rally and come back and <laughs> just for fun I just want to show you this spread has been amazing this was our target goal we were expecting it just to come back to equilibrium with the previous uh, trend of the, of the spread the market dropped out the bottom turned around and just went crazy on us and has gone all the way from negative what's this negative four all the way to a positive 14 that is an amazing spread. Uh, we had a number of guys who traded that in the trading club and reported that they made some money, but most of them jumped out a lot earlier than that. None of them went all the way to the end. And so we had some good trades in there 
uh, on the short side in this thing. I think in this, uh, in this, uh, uh, in in our case, we ran that one up until it got back to equilibrium, and that's where we got out as well in this in 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 this market. So this market just continued to go, went crazy on us. And what we want to do is we want to log this in our brain, write it down somewhere, put it in your calculator, and put put it into your calendar on your smartphone and let's look at this again August 31st starting around August 15th we're gonna start watching this market again in 2019 we want to remember these types of spreads and uh, because they have a tendency to repeat themselves year after year after year for some reason so we want to look at this again next year make sure you put that in your calendar and let's watch for that alright folks that's just kind of a quick wrap up of managing your portfolio and not putting on any new trades, taking off some trades, getting out, watching, managing, looking for locations to exit positions, take profits. And we'll leave it at that, and we'll catch up with you next time. Take care. Hi, my name is Lan Turner, and if you enjoyed this video and would like to learn a little bit more about day trading these Fibonacci and Elliott Wave patterns, as I've exampled here, stop by my website at www.tradementors.com where you can access my free Heisenberg day trading course where I teach you exactly how to trade using the red light, green light system, intercept orders, the blue light system, and much more. It's free. Stop by and learn how to make this happen for yourself.